I'm sure it comes as no surprise that one of the most common questions I get with anybody that comes and starts a fitness program is, okay, where do I start? Now, of course, the beginning point is different places for everyone, but I've never really thought about or talked about where is the best place to start? In other words, what's the true foundation of a good lifestyle program? Well, that's easy. It starts as a kid. Talking about the true foundation of a fitness program with my guest today, Dr. Jonathan Holmes, today on the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast. Welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Health, wellness, exercise, nutrition, and a whole lot more. Got questions? Call us and leave a message at 251-278-EDGE or message us at Personal Edge Fitness on Facebook and Instagram at Team PE on Twitter or PersonalEdgeFitness.com. Good day and welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast. This is your host, Garrett Williamson, president of Personal Edge Fitness. Thank you so much for joining us today and listening into the program. I want to let you know uh, if you have any questions about this topic or any others, or if you have a question concerning the myths of health, fitness, and wellness, please feel free to contact us at 251-278-3343. That's 251-278-EDGE. You can also reach out to me at Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T, at PersonalEdgeFitness.com. Of course, that's our website, personalizedfitness.com, and our Facebook page. Now, for those of you that had some questions about last week's show, thank you so much. And I appreciate the compliments I got on the sound. Evidently, I'm getting some of it right. I shot it on my deck. But also, I had some great questions about our upcoming program, which we're going to talk a little bit about today, the Catalyst for Youth program. Another program note, we will be having that full podcast about that particular program coming up next week with Joshua Gooch. Please stay tuned for that, and I appreciate all the questions there. I thought it was rather fortuitous that I was out training. As as many of you know, I'm training for three national championships right now, and I've got the races coming up in a few months. So I'm actually doing something different this year. I'm actually training for them. I thought that would be kind of a unique way to approach this. And so I was happened to be swimming and and, and literally ended up being paced, but somebody was really pushing my buttons, I got to say, in the lane next to me because I was getting towards the end. I was proud of the fact that I was completing this 2000, thought I was running a good pace. And here he comes running inside me. And, And if you're in this situation, you can't help but try to keep up with the person next to you. And at the end of it, I ended up thanking him for pushing me. We got to know each other and found out what he did for a living. And today's the guest of my podcast. I want to welcome to the show Dr. Jonathan Holmes, pediatrician with the Children's Medical Group. Thank you so much, Garrett. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you, too, for the opportunity to uh, run you a little bit there on that lane. That was <laughs> that was really fun. I, sometimes you just go with it. And that that was the moment. I had an urge. It was highly, it was highly motivational. And, I, and I'll tell you this, that, that I'll tell you what some, a client of mine tells me all the time, and, and I love it. He's iron sharpens, sharpens iron. So That's let's it. go with that. I think it makes us both look better, you know. That's so right. The reason I said it was fortuitous is because of the program we're about to kick off. Dr. Holmes, I'll get you to tell you a little bit about himself, but he's a multi-sport athlete, and it actually spoke great to this topic. So first thing, I want to know a little bit about you, Mm -hmm. man. Tell us about you. So I am a board-certified pediatrician at Children's Medical Group, one of 10 physicians. We have two locations, been around since 1950. We're the biggest pediatric group in town. Oh, wow. I didn't um, know that. We pride ourselves on that, and we also have uh, pretty extended hours available. So, oh, awesome. awesome. Um, we have our, our two locations, one on airport behind the uh, IHOP there, right next to like, TJ, TJ Maxx. The right. other one is located, and that's where I work on Providence campus. Oh, okay, okay. So right. my background in training, um, I did an undergrad in Hillsdale College in Michigan right. uh, in psychology, and then um, did my medical school training uh, at American University of the Caribbean in St. Martin. Right. My third year of that, uh, I went to London and actually studied for a year abroad. Oh, wow. And then my fourth year when I did my, my clinical rotations there, kind of traveled all over the country. Awesome. Um, from Florida to California and Michigan um, and got kind of a broad overview of health systems. Um, really good fourth year training in medical school. Um, I did three years of pediatric residency here at University of South Alabama and awesome. um, at Children's and Women's Hospital. So, it wasn't a lack of education, that's for sure. I mean, no, well, <laughs> I, a lack of travel for that matter. <laughs> travel or education. Uh, certainly, I didn't uh, go to a lot of fellowships like some of maybe of your other guests who have come on right, here. Right. Um, but uh, I like having a broad range to treat, and pediatrics does that for me. Not I'm only sure. do I get to you know talk to parents um, about their children, but I get to see 
infants as well as school-aged kids, toddlers, adolescents. So for me, it's it's really engaging and it's always different. So awesome. Um, that's our um, our motto at at CMG is we want to just treat families and their kids. Awesome. It's not just a patient. Um, and uh, our, I wanted to give one quick plug in to um, I kind of mentioned our hours a little bit, but I wanted yeah. to expand on that. Please. We have nighttime hours available. Oh wow! Um, from five till eight p.m. and That's then every of. Saturday and Sunday we have a physician in the office from eight till six. Oh wow! Um, so cool. that kind of goes with our model. We're available all the time yeah. for, for yeah. all the patients. Yeah. So That's fantastic. Yeah. Give us that motto again, because th- that really speaks to the heart of what we're talking about today. Really, the, the focus of the motto is we care for patients and their families. Right. So it's a, it's, a, it's a unit. It's not just a single problem or a single patient. Everything is connected. Uh, okay. And to, to the family and to the individual. Mm-hmm. Exactly. The yeah. single problem is, 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 I love that. The single problem is actually connected because it goes, again, hand in hand what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, you, and I, you and I got to speak for, um, I, I'm going to say for the show briefly, and really I talked his ear off and I appreciate him listening. <laughs> actually, then he and I both got really passionate about what we, what we enjoy and found a lot of connections. But we were talking about the program that we have coming up and, and uh, where we're doing our catalyst program along with confidence building, optimism, mm-hmm. whatever. And I'm, I'm going to talk more about that later. And then you started talking about how basically the five fundamentals, I would say, if I'm not, mm-hmm. if I'm not paraphrasing the wrong way, the five fundamentals of health in a child. Mm-hmm. I sat back and started taking notes because, I mean, I, I agree with it. This isn't something that's necessarily coined or patented. This is Understand. me sitting down and thinking about my 10 years of practice right. and thinking, okay, um, what is it that, that helps kids achieve their best version of themselves? Right. Um, and when I when it came down to nuts and bolts and I was able to really – find some finite things that that kids need it's a a balance between these things number one um, and you're going to agree with a lot of this number one is going to be making sure that we have some kind of activity sport uh, something that we can do that creates happiness that's a physical movement right Um, number two would be uh, an appropriate level of hydration and nutrition Y'all know I hate that, right? I mean, come on, fantastic. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't, did I pay you to say that? No, no. Okay, that, see, there you go. Already there. It, exactly. So, hey, guys, y'all know I've said it a million times. It's recommended by the National Institute of Health, the Stanford Medical, Harford Medical, Pritikin Clinic, Cooper Clinic, Mayo Clinic. You can keep going on for days, man. Over 100 ounces of water for every single adult, every single day of your life. I'm telling you, it will absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> change your life sorry yeah, go no, ahead please good. so hydration um, he mentioned hydration was one of them hydration uh, appropriate nutrition uh, the other thing is adequate sleep I see this a, a lot and a lot of a lot of kids don't get adequate sleep there's a lot of reasons for that but that's the third thing I'd like to bring up um, the last two are more about social uh, and kind of imperatives that would be good healthy relationships with parents and good, healthy relationships with peers or friends. When you have all five of those components together, I've found that um, these kids do extremely well. Not only are they happy, healthy, but then they are going above and beyond in life. And by the time that they're ready to be off on their own, they've built these good foundations, right. and they're they're becoming the best version of, them, of themselves. So I really think that if you had those five, and not everyone is perfect, everyone's progressing towards it, but if you're right. working towards these five, you don't have to have them, then you're on the right path. I've always referred to a pediatrician as the general practitioner for, for children. Because, sure. I mean, like sure. you said, you get to practice so many different things. What I love about this is y'all, y'all hear me talk all the time about the Fountain of Youth. In fact, what I did a podcast two weeks ago about Fountain of Youth, covering the three things that... I stress are the fountain of youth, fitness, hydration, and protein. And what I love that you've done here is you've presented every single aspect that would make a, for lack of a better term, a good kid, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, a happy, healthy kid. And that healthy word is extremely broad. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not looking at somebody, looking at a child or looking at anybody for that matter and saying, wow, they look fit, they're healthy. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. What's going on here? What's going on with their entire body? Because this is going to affect this. It's going to affect every aspect of it. And like you said a minute ago, it's going to affect the whole family. Mm -hmm. So I want to break these down a little bit. The result of not doing such things. We're going to get into that in a minute. I want to break these down just a little bit. When you say fitness and activity, just to drive this home a little bit, this is something that we see on a regular basis when I have people uh, sit in my office, and it's kind of a defense mechanism, 
I believe when they sit down and say, you know, now you have to understand when I was in high school, I was, I know Superman. I've, I've read, you know, I think New York Times had some information about you. And <laughs> yeah, I know all about that. I don't mean that rude. I understand that. Hey, I have mine too. I'm in the mm-hmm. Athletic Hall of Fame in my high school. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> but we talk about that. And then they say that, you know, just something happened and have no idea what it is and they're not active anymore. But that change, that's something we should have every day of our lives, play, fitness, activity. And with kids, there's an abundant Mm -hmm. amount of those things out there so Mm -hmm. but when it comes to a child that is not he's not the kid that's in every single athletics every season he's got a new athletic it's the kids that are sitting around playing video games and what have you i know that's challenges for you what recommendations do you have give us some information about how you battle that Sure, i'm going to give you kind of two big things here one is that activity and exercise is different for each age bracket Okay. So I'm going to start kind of youngest and work my way up. And then I'm going to confront the issue that you brought up about how, you know, my kid just likes to play video games or sit around and and be sedentary. So I'm going to touch on that too. Right. The the first thing is toddlers play. And that's it. It's simple. Yeah. We like that. We let them play. They run us ragged. We're tired at the end of the day. They're still going. They have lots of energy. As we advance into the school-aged kids, which becomes more important to have activity and exercise, um, now we're talking um, play with peers. And that's going to be something like simple, like playing out on the recess, going to the playground. Right. And for parents with, with school-aged kids, that's the most important thing. Sure. Just go out there. Right. You know, at that age, go bring them to the playground. Make the extra effort to take the trip, even though you're tired or it's been a long day or you've got plans on the weekend. It's good to have that activity for school-aged kids. They're going to make friendships out on the playground. They're going to climb. They're going to increase their motor skills. It's going to be a good challenge for them. But that's also when organized sports can start too. Right, of course. And you start to look at like things like pee wee and all that, pee football and baseball and t ball, that, and and that's good. Um, but that's not required. That's just something that's out there, and of it's, it's good for them. When we start advancing from the school age bracket of kids into adolescence, yeah. um, now we're looking at like more of an organized sport approach. And you know, when you look at the American Heart Association, it's going to tell adults you need at least three days a week of 30 minutes or more, and you need sweat from your brow to count it as exercise. Right. Um, you know, adults will hear that and kind of, you know, shove it off like, oh, right. yeah, I, I don't think so. Or, right. You know, I don't want to sweat or whatever it may be. But that's not necessarily activity. Um, it could yeah. be as simple as just being a family and going for a walk after dinner. Yeah, sure. I got um, you. So it's a broad range that's appropriate, but there's right. got to be something. And my experience is the kids that have involvement with other kids, right. um, they tend to start setting goals without knowing it. They right. start making friends without knowing it. They yeah. start getting self-confidence without knowing it. And before you know it, you have a, a child who has lots of um, improvement, and it's just from a simple activity. And, 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 so. and you know, we, we would call that, I love that, because I want to get to that quickly. You know, we, I, I, if y'all, you understand that we can touch on hydration and talk about that, obviously. But what I really want to get to is I want to get to those other things you talked about, sleep. And you were talking about what mm-hmm. you were just saying about the peer involvement. Now, we would look at that as trainers as we look at that as that's an accountability thing, mm-hmm. you know. Right. And, and uh, they don't even know it, but they're creating accountability to be active and what have mm-hmm. you and engaged, not only physically, but, but mentally. Mm-hmm. But um, just because of the essence of time here, um, going to sleep, talking about sleep patterns and yeah. those last few things on your list, I want to touch on those. Sure. Um, you know, when we talk about sleep, um, you know, ultimately kids have, when they're younger, they will sleep as much as they need. Right. But as we get into school, and this is most important for the teens and when we're in middle and high school, um, we see a lack of sleep. And whether that's busyness that's going on or if there's just too much schoolwork, um, you know, a lot of that has to do with finding time to sleep and getting off the devices. Right. The big thing about video games and, and kids, create a screen time contract. Oh, awesome. So this is where, yeah, they can play video games. They can do what they want. But it's got to be after we've done our chores. And I'm going to give you an example. This is okay, yeah, sure, sure. Um, we've done our chores. We've finished our homework. We've sat down and wrote our paragraph for the day. Right. We've done something positive for the family, whether it was you know clean or or uh, whatever it may be that you as a family decide. Okay, this is your contract. When you have all those things done, yeah. now you can earn yourself a half hour of video game time. Oh, cool! So now right. you're you're not only gonna kind of give them motivation, right. but it's a reward. 
Right. And they can have what they want, but not overdo it. Like they just come home and then just look at video games and then now they're behind on their homework and now they're tired because they're up trying to catch up on their homework because they played video games. So if you create that contract with your kid, a lot of times they'll understand why. And yeah. then they'll be motivated to do it. The, and this goes, you're exactly right. This goes into something you and I were talking about earlier. And, uh, and that is that you're, you, in that situation, you're creating accountability. You're creating ownership mm-hmm. yeah. for the kid. I mean, okay, I, I want this to happen. I've got ownership of that. I can make it happen by, by doing these things. Mm-hmm. But, but um, and I'm, I'm jumping around, jumping off that topic, going to what we were talking about. about you, you described an interesting situation because you meet with your patient is the, is the child, but it's really the parent, too, you mm-hmm. know, that you're working with. And you talked about a unique situation where you try to create some ownership in that, mm-hmm. not only with the child, but with the parents as far as the responsibility is concerned. And mm-hmm. I'm, I'm opening the door here, but, yeah, but sure. go to that, please, if you wouldn't mind. So uh, the context of our conversation at that point was talking a little bit about you know, healthy feeding options and right. just, you know, good choices of food at the house. And well, you know, a lot of parents, you know, they try and give their kids something healthy to eat and maybe it doesn't go over very well. But a lot of times when I run into that, that barrier with my patients, I'll look at the, the, the kid and I'll say, well, go ahead and choose, choose your three favorite fruit. You know, it's no, no pressure. You don't even have to agree to eat them, right. but what three fruit do you like? Sure. And, you know, this gives, gives a child options. Right. It gives a child the freedom to think of their favorites, and ultimately they will think of the three favorite things they're most willing to eat. Of course. When they say apples, grapes, and bananas, I'll look over at the parents and say, okay, there you go. Now you've got a green light for things that, that we like maybe. Right. And and this is something too that um that I do in my house. Whenever I buy my fruit, I wash it immediately. Mm-hmm. I don't just keep it in the bag and chuck it in the fridge. Yeah. Um. I wash it, I dry it, and then I put it out on a bowl. When the kids are walking by, now oh, there's a perfect clean piece of fruit. I don't have to go into the bag, dig around, wash it, and then eat it. Right. It's right there. It just makes availability. So now when I ask the kid, what's your favorite fruit? That's telling them it's okay to eat and you get to choose what it is. Right. So I'm creating for, ownership right there. It. Yeah. So the, you know, I can I use that technique a lot and, and it also helps me kind of connect with the patient because now right. we're having a conversation, not I'm talking about them to the parent. I like the way you're saying that instead of just telling the parent you're going to do this, that, and the other, you become another parent to mm-hmm. this child. But I mean, and what I mean by that, kind of an overbearing authority figure that, that maybe they do or do not want to mm-hmm. take it. Instead, you're turning around and ask them. It's the same thing we do when we interview kids to work out. Mm-hmm. I always tell the parent at some point in time, I'm going to turn this conversation over to your child mm-hmm. because your child is the client here. And I want to know, right. what do you want? What do you like? Because if they choose those things, they have a buy-in, they have ownership. Mm-hmm. And then I love the way you're making, okay, now you've chosen it, you've got accountability to, to carry through with it. And so mm-hmm. making that available, it also gives a great opportunity for the parents to really make a difference in the life. Right. Speaking of making a difference in the life, mm-hmm. the bottom half of what you were telling me about earlier, the five, you've got the five pillars there, mm-hmm. but you were telling me earlier about, okay, what happens when we don't do these things or, mm-hmm. or please carry through with that. Yeah, this is the sure. finish of that, of that story of making sure that you've got those five things. But so if a lot of, you know, these five things that I've learned aren't in balance. Um, a lot of times we'll, we'll have what a lot of people experience. I'm going to give you some examples and we can talk about kind of each one of those, sure. but, um, you know, it starts off with as simple as things like anxiety, uh, or depression or school phobia, which, you know, that's been a lot over this last year and a half with all of the pandemic going on. There's been a lot of absenteeism in school and that creates kind of anxiety. So a lot of these things are near and dear to a lot of people. We're right. going through some hard times. Um, not only that, but it's difficult when you don't have these things in order, you have difficulty maintaining relationships, sure. friendships, um, we can have difficulty concentrating, difficulty keeping grades up. Right. And then you can get more into the nuts and bolts, difficulty with bowel movements and constipation, reflux. Right fatigue, different pains, like of it. Yeah. headache, uh, all of these things, which as humans, we experience at some point or another. But a lot of these things are corrected very easily by kind of simple suggestions from, from this kind of like basic five point list. Right. One of the biggest ones being hydration, right? good nutrition, activity, appropriate amount of sleep, and then good relationships with parents and, and friends. And I like that, the relationship with parents and friends and, and how that, that does plug into this. When we think of kids' health, we think nutrition, we think fitness. And we may think sleep, but we don't 
we may, be, may not think about it all the way through. Mm-hmm. And that has so much to do with the, the stress they deal with and what have you. So real quick, just to let you know, we're speaking right now with Dr. Jonathan Holmes with the Children Medical Group, pediatrician, and talking about developing a healthy child, I guess mm-hmm. you'd say. We spoke about it a little bit before the program. This happens to go hand in hand with what we're doing with our Catalyst Youth Program. We want to encourage kids in, about developing a healthy relationship with food, healthy relationship with activity, understanding that, but also put them in a peer group situation that is comfortable in that we're actually starting a book series from Dan Donnelly, which is Sports for the Soul, books on empowerment, books on creating great optimism, books on conquering fears. When you were talking about that, I thought, wow, that really speaks to that whole peer group mm-hmm. situation, the sure activity and engaging with them. So we're going to not really want to talk too much about that today. Like I say, we're going to be talking about that in next week's show. And I'm going to jump way away from that unless I'm leaving something that uh, that you may have wanted to point out because we're coming close to the end. Mm-hmm. I want to bring the, I'm hoping, you see, I'm, I'm setting him up for this because I'm hoping <laughs> that uh, this will not be the only time I see uh, Dr. Holmes on the show with us because Besides this, being a father and a, and mm-hmm. a husband, you also are a multi-sport athlete. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, I would consider myself very amateur. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm not at your level. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure about that because of some of the races that he informed me of. One of them that you that you were talking about getting ready for, there's Run, Swim, Run. And we, he said that to me the other day. Garrett, you ever heard of the Run, Swim, Run? And I said, didn't I just tell you I do a quathlon? No, this is something completely different. Tell us what this <laughs> <Sure>. is. <huh? laughs> uh, well, this is a, a race um, of two people. And partners will kind of jog or run and then swim and run and swim. And it's over different sets of terrain. So right. you know, they'll do trail running and then you'll jump into a lake and then jump out of the lake and then run on the trail again and then jump back into the lake and <laughs> off a cliff or whatever. And so it's, you know, it's like an 18 mile race. <laughs> exactly. But it's not like a mile and a half here. We're talking 18 mile race on this thing. Yeah. So, so that, that's, that's on the bucket list. That's coming up. Hopefully I'm still looking for a partner. So. Maybe we'll see what happens yeah, later. Somebody on. behind me or something. I didn't know who you're talking about. So definitely. So I'm also I'm also mentioning it to him because he did mention that that's a bucket list. I want to do this, and I'm throwing some accountability in there. So now we've got it on there. Yeah, you there know, now is. you have to make it happen. So. <laughs> no problem. Look, we could talk about this subject for hours, and I've actually talked to Dr. Holmes already about getting involved a little bit, tying you to this, but getting involved a little bit with our program because I love your insights on on the way you look at treating a child mm-hmm. and uh and the fact you look at treating the entire family you are working with the parents and uh, the way you break this down so simply about what they need to me it's like the found youth for a kid and the recipe for a, a healthy child so mm-hmm. tell them how to get in touch with you if they're interested in getting more information yeah, sure our website is cmgdoctors.com okay phone number to be reached at as well 251-639-1300 all right that's the providence office location i wanted to you know let parents know and anyone who's listening that you know if you wanted to come in and talk about any one of these things and you're just not quite sure how to get started with it, always available for consults. You don't have to be an established patient. You can come and we can talk anytime. That's awesome. The, That's uh, awesome. the other piece to reach an ideal child's life kind of rides parallel with adults. And the thing that unites all five of these things, and for adults as well, I wanted to make sure I, I said before we left is that how important your attitude is to this. So oh, yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, that is something that links them all. And I, I know you've touched on before, but when we look at all of these things together, the attitude that you have to go forward and you can have as much adversity in your life that you can take and more, but how you deal with it, how you think about it, is always going to determine the outcome. So it doesn't right. matter if you've been, you know, kind of handed down everything on a silver platter or had to pull your bootstraps up from the ground and work your way, but it's always on what you do with your positive attitude that, that dictates right. how good you're going to be. So as a human, we're always going to come in contact with that. But this is a way that you can think about maybe unifying all five of these areas and making sure that your kid, yourself, that you're doing the best thing you can. Some days are going to be hard. And as long as you know that the day will come to an end and there will be another one to achieve greatness, right. you can keep going and strive to be a better version of yourself. This is great. Maybe I should have ended it right there because it's close to how I end every single podcast. But <laughs> you've heard all this before. And what I'm talking about is that when I talk about the live age, and basically it boils down to four things, fitness, nutrition, lifestyle, and the most important, the one that dictates everything is mindset. Mm-hmm. And that's attitude. Yeah, that's it. And if we started talking at the very beginning of this about foundation. I think it does all come down to attitude. Mm-hmm. That's the true foundation. Mm-hmm. That's basically a recipe for living your level of wellness. 
which of course is our mission statement. So <laughs> listen, if you're interested in any questions about this show or any others, or, or if you have any trouble getting in touch, we're going to put all the link information on our Facebook page. You should be seeing it there. If you have any problems getting in touch though, contact us at 251-278-3343. You can contact me, Garrett at Garrett at personaledgefitness.com. And that's also our Facebook page and our website. So thank you so much, thank Don- you. Jonathan, for joining us on the show. Please do come back. We've got a lot more of this to cover. Thank you so much, Garrett. I appreciate it. I appreciate y'all joining us today. And Tune in next week for the podcast on the new Catalyst program. Y'all have a good day. Thanks for listening to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Subscribe now and be a part of the show by calling 251-278-EDGE or message us on Facebook and Instagram at Personal Edge Fitness or at Team PE on Twitter and visit us at PersonalEdgeFitness.com.